Last time on Lawful Stupid. You guys are sitting down for the night? Yes. Ryder starts whining. Ryder? What, what is it? It's laughter. I turn back to the camp. Hello? There's something really creepy in the woods. I didn't think it was wise to investigate it alone. So come on, let's go. Both of you, you hear this laughter and you see this flickering of light dancing in between the trees. Ryder begins to veer off to the left and Oslo falls to the right. Ryder, cub mode. And he's just going to like try and pick her up with his mouth. We head back that direction. If I just pat Ryder on the head and he drops you. Perry, it's your watch. Peregrine, my dear, sweet, unworn child. Um, you hear this laughter. I'm going to walk towards it. You know there's a party right on the horizon. You just got to get there. As the sun is coming up, you see Perry resting blissfully against the trunk of a tree. On my island, in the arcane trees, they like to play tricks. These are very similar. Delmore goes and gets in the cart and lays down with Ryder. <laughs> I'm going to get a head start on that nap. So you guys have packed up camp. You guys have survived your encounter in the late night wood. And um, you guys are ready to depart again if you want to, or you can continue to investigate. I'm not here to tell you what to do. Depart. Onward. Forward. Onward! Well, onward, I suppose. Okay. Ah. So you head south. You head south in your cart with your two horses, Chestnut and Whiskers. And, um, yes, I love... <laughs> take the notes. Um, chestnut, Whiskers. And you guys um, travel for about four hours when you start to notice a pretty stark change in your environment. What you see is, well, Lumberjacks. You see, at first, just individuals chopping trees with axes, what you would expect. And then as you go further, you see less and less dense forest, and you see machinery. These large, large... I mean, they're not super complex, but they're basically designed to ram with the edge blade at the front at the base of trees. Nothing like a chainsaw, anything crazy like that, but large devices that are designed to bring your tra trees down quickly, um, and you go a little bit further, and you see kind of a, a barren area as you see mostly stumps as this area of um, deforestation has occurred. Hey guys, I can tell you why it's called the Tears Port. Because all the tears of the trees. Damn. Dang. Okay. It is sad. Uh, I think Oslo has retreated to Perry's backpack again because she really doesn't like this. I'm just gonna watch Finn because I don't care about the trees particularly, but I know he does. Same. What, what are they doing here? The guessing lumber? from the trees, I would assume, unless there's something else. But usually you chop down the tree to get the wood. I know this. What I am saying oh, is it... Is it when they destroy the forest, it doesn't only affect the trees. It affects the animals that live here. It affects the environment around you. It affects the people that live in the areas around this. It is more than just a tree that is being chopped down. Sh sure, but you need wood to build a civilization. Buildings. Delmore looks at the cart. Carts. Hmm. Ships. I understand, but in <laughs> don't you think we build our homes from wood? But we replant. We rebuild. Otherwise, the future generations have nothing. The planet dies. That sounds terrible. Maybe they do replant. Does it look like they replant? Uh, I, I don't... I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, I... This is something that makes me very angry. Everybody needs to make a dexterity saving throw. <clears throat> Oh, I don't know. You're gonna get killed by a tree. Tree ants, tree ants. Oh, no. I'm I'm gonna gonna I missed my dice box entirely. Steed uh -oh. my die across my table. Dexterity. Delmore has a please. Delmore has a dirty twenty, and Ryder has a 
16. Uh, 14. Oslo also has a dirty 20. I got an 8. I got a 10. Mm. Only Peregrine. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> there is a huge explosion from one of these machines, one of these large plow-like machines as shrapnel and flames explode in every direction. And in fact, one piece of one uh, of shrapnel, one piece of hot metal flies from the debris and it strikes you, Perry, in the shoulder. You take five points of piercing damage. Ouch! Uh, I take back what I said. I don't think these are the type of people who replant trees. Ow! What was is, that? Is everyone okay? I'm fine. Ow. Am I bleeding? Or did it, like, cauterize? Because it was hot. It was so hot, we'll say it cauterized. <sighs> Little housekeeping. Did I heal from getting thorn whipped, or am I still down a little bit? You did take a rest afterwards, I'll say you're healed. I'm going to look over at the direction of where that came from. Hey! You and you want? see that there, there's there's a number of these men and they're shouting and cr- and crying and, and you know people are bringing buckets of water to try to put out the flames from this machine and then everybody make a dexterity saving throw. Oh dash. Oh no. 16. 16. Oh, Seven. Another dirty 20. Delmore is 12, Ryder is 7. Perry Finnegan, Ryder, four points of piercing damage as another explosion on the opposite side of the road. As the shrapnel comes and you guys are buffeted by just pieces of, of, of jagged flaming metal. Everyone get down. Uh, Delmore looks up. Delmore looks up to the sky. Is there something flying above us? No. Okay, cool. <laughs> What do you do? I'm going to pull up my shield and try to duck into the cart as much as I can. Same here. I'm okay. facing the opposite way, so we're like, I'm going to be back-to-back with uh, with Perry. You're driving the cart, Finnegan. Are the horses not losing their shit? They are. I'm going to um, roll up front. Since Finnegan's riding, I'm going to try and, like, at least from one of those sides, use my shield to help deflect. Yeah, I'll, like, move up towards the front and block on the other side. Okay. I'm cowering in that bag. <laughs> Go fast yeah, you could hide under you could hide under Ryder. <laughs> so I've got like my shield out. I'm hiding under. I've got one hand with reins, and the other one is is the shield is up in front of my face, so I can just see just over it. And what are you doing? And I'm like I'm whipping, like getting the horses to, to go faster. We're getting through this. <clears throat> Make an animal handling check. One would say he whips, and then he nays. <laughs> no, that's the horses do that. The horses nay. Made that joke three episodes again. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about it again. Okay, I'm putting a man on my hand right here. This is a matter. Mm-hmm. This is a moment Downtown. of tension. Oh gosh, <clears throat> is it? Should be. Hmm. Okay, that's good. Seventeen. Yeah. So absolutely, you crack the reins, and these horses go forward. They fight their natural instincts to scurry and scatter, and you're moving forward. And then you can hear it around you. They're shouting. There's explosions. You're moving. Shrapnel is coming. It's clanging against the shields that you guys have kind of constructed in this wall-like pattern, protecting Finn as he drives the horses forward. And you ride, and you ride, and you ride. And then things seem quiet. I start to slow the horses a little bit. There's no more explosions. There are men running from in front of you out towards the explosions are behind you. Should should we go help? Uh, we need to. Everyone. Nope we have we have a mission. This seems like a perfect distraction. That is not our problem. <sighs> They're probably hurt. They probably have medics. Uh, hearing uh, Perry say that, like my immediate instincts are to like. They're hurting the trees, let them go. But she says they're probably hurt. And I know as much as I don't want to that I probably should go and help. Do you try to turn the cart around? So I, I don't think I would turn. 
how far is it behind us? So you said we were riding for a while. How far? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're now, um, we'll call it a good a three minute ride. Yeah, on car. Like, it's. Can we still hear explosions happening? No, you haven't heard any more explosions. That's when that's when Finn started to stop the horses or slow the horses is when the explosion stopped. If there's no danger, we could go help. I, I, it's not our mission, and they're fine. Also, they're, listen, they're fine. One of us can't be noticed. One of us can't be noticed. One of you, us, can fit in the bag. I'm not talking about me. Who? Yeah, she's she's talking about me. Um, Remember, big bounty. The one with the lots robot of, dog. Yeah, well, lots of well. Star, hey, leave, leave Ryder out of this. It's my head. On, anyways, um, listen. That's not our mission. Our mission is to scout out the airship, steal the airship, destroy the airship, and kill the jackal. This is a Perry. perfect distraction. Perry, if you want to go with me to take a look, we can let these two go in. Just wait right here. We'll. <laughs> Finn and I will go. You two just wait. We'll be back. Uh, it won't man, take long, uh, and I and we're gonna run off. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Perry's gonna. Be, I was just gonna jump out of Perry's bag. I'll, I'll take my bag. No, no, I got stuff in there. I'll keep my. Don't bag. do that. Bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> I got my things. No, I'll, I'll jump off the back of the cart and just start hustling as fat, hustle my bustle back towards. Okay. And do you two continue to ride forward? You should probably pull to the side. For us. <laughs> um, there's nowhere for cover, right? At all. No, this area is like deforested. <sighs> I mean, you could like get out and like hop behind a stump, uh, but it's not going to help the car or yeah. the horses. No, I'm not worried about us. I'm worried about the cart as a whole. Um, yeah, okay, well, yeah, we'll just pull the cart over and hang okay. tight. And that's where we'll pause there for Oslo and for Delmore. Uh, Finnegan and Peregrine, you run and you hustle your bustles towards the source of these explosions. There are men running alongside you um, that are they're obviously a part of this operation. What did you see? Uh, 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 something exploded. There was metal fire. Uh, one of your machines. Damn it. Multiple of your machines. <sighs> Does it happen? Okay. Often? Does it happen often? This is the second time. <sighs> All right, just going as fast as we can. And as you guys approach, got my little legs. Hear... <laughs> as you guys approach, you hear the sounds of fighting. Like metal fighting, or like raised voices fighting? Like conflict, skirmish. Okay. And as you guys approach Finnegan, it takes you no time at all. You recognize a force of these, I mean, they're lumberjacks, they're working, they're holding axes, they're holding tools and equipment, and you see, these are your people. You notice in their clothing and just the general demeanor of them, that they are from the Pulas Islands. They are specifically from the Arcane Tree Tribe. Harry. Yes. They are here. These, these, these are the people that are holding me down. These are the arcane forest people. Um. Okay. Are we? I I am confused as what to do. You we do I do we see any like actively hurt? Like on the ground. <laughs> yeah, there there are people that are actively hurt on the ground from the explosions, and also there are people that are being they're, they're actively attacking each other. Perry Grid, we we must help these. <laughs> this is a tough position. One mm-hmm. <laughs> because yes. the lumberjacks cutting down the dagum trees <laughs> that makes me mad. Mm-hmm. Two, yep. the arcane forest people are there. And they also make me angry. That was my intent, yes. Perry, I <laughs> I am at a loss for decisions. We we need to help these these men. As much as I do not agree with them chopping down the trees, I feel my people are here for the wrong reasons. 
you think you can stop the fighting? That's how we save the most people. Uh, how, how many do we... Is this just number of people? Can I do a perception check for that? Uh, yeah, do it with disadvantage because of everything going on. That's a seven. It's hard to tell. You know there's more of these lumberjacks than there are of your people. That, that they, they seem like they are... Um, even though there's more less of their opposition than there are of them, they seem to be at a disadvantage just because they're not trained fighters. Uh, I'm going to start, like, walk and talk towards the nearest injured person. I'm going to follow. And you see a man, he's he's laying down and he's, he's clutching at his chest and he's <gasps> struggling to breathe as there's this hot metal piece in his chest seems <laughs> punctured lung. Uh, hold still, friend. I'm going to... It's okay, it's okay. It'll be fine. I'm going to brace against him as much as I can and oof. I ain't never done this before. Um, I want to pull it out in the least damaging way possible and then immediately cast Lay on Hands. This, this, yeah, you give it a yank I'm, and cast Lay on Hands to. Uh, yeah, how many points? Ooh. How many points? <laughs> Five. <sighs> As you see the wound, the tense, the, the the fibers, the tensiles of skin and flesh begin to meld together, and the wound closes. And there's this red, aggravated area. But <sighs> breath comes. Thank you. Quick, tell me why they are here. They, they don't want us to do our jobs. And he passes out. Oh. Perry, follow me. And so what's going to happen now is uh, Finn turns toward nearest fight. Nearest. How far is that? Mm-hmm. 20 feet. He, he stands. He stands. He's looking at his hands. And they, they turn into, like, the furry bear paws. And at the same time, his eyes go completely, like, white. Like a glowing white, almost. And he runs toward that 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 person, that group. Oh, oh what's what doing this? That's rage mode. Peregrine. Finnegrin. Roll initiative. Okay. Oh, it's a nat 20! Ooh. Mine is not. It's a it's a it's a nat twelve. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, bears are yeah. slow. Come on, man. We get it. First X Peregrine. As you survey the battlefield, you see um, three of these members that look similar to Finnegan, dark skin, um, this kind of island clothing, um, and they are standing on this this outcropping ridge um, where they are uh, you see they have slings in their hands and they're casting these stones down on the workers who are just doing what they can to hide behind these flaming wreckage of machinery uh, axes in hand what do you do? Okay. Um, shield up mm-hmm. sword in one hand I am going to try and could I get there all the way up to them up to you, the... if you're going for the island people you'd have to take dash action to get to them Hmm. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Okay, so you're able to to run in and dash and kind of scramble up this hill and close the distance. Um, I'm going to mm-hmm. put you on the far right side where the three of them are, just so you kind of have a singular approach to them, if that makes sense. Yep. Okay, perfect. And um, that is your action and your movement action. Any bonus action? Um. Nope, not yet. Finny gone. Oh, you said there's three of my peeps? Yep. Okay, so uh, move to closest, and I'm just going to, to attack. Um, you I don't have the distance to oh, okay. close. I'm going to stick pre- with Perry as much as possible, so I will They're move They're about up 50 to feet away, so if you take the dash action, you can close right up with Perry and be alongside of her. I will do that. Okay, any bonus action? Um, negative. Okay. Uh, it is going to then be... Um, these uh, three Islanders turns, um, they 
one of them, the closest one to you, Finnegan, the one that you've now closed into melee with, looks at you, and there's like this light of recognition in his eyes as he identifies you as who you are. Um, but he kind of just turns and sleep, lets loose a stone at one of these workers. Oh yeah, and he absolutely hits. And you see the stone glow with this arcane light as it's loosed from the sling and it sails forward and you see it kind of burst forward with impact as it hits um, this worker who just drops unmoving. And his fellows let loose as well. One of them hits, the other definitely shoots wide and you see another one of these workers fall limp from this, this and it's 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 this very loud reaction this concussive blast that comes off the stone as it makes contact with its target and then it is going to be the workers turns And every okay, every single one of the workers, um, they kind of steal their courage. There's five of them that are left, other than the two that are down, and they charge with this roar. They charge up the hill, brandishing their axes. Um, they can't quite make it there with enough time to take an action, but they are engaging their courage, steeled, peregrine. Um, I want to... <laughs> I want to use my bonus action mm-hmm. to use my channel Divinity mm-hmm. uh, to cast Peerless Athlete, which is going to give me advantage on all strength, or athletics and acrobatics checks for the next 10 minutes. Okay. And then I'm going to attempt to grapple the nearest island per- island folk to the ground. And I think what you do is you take a moment and you you tra- channel the strength of a crashing wave and as you do your muscles and your body just begins to flex and tense. It's not like you grow, you know, 10 feet. It's not like you're this huge abomination anymore, but just all that you do have just is intensified and there are these veins kind of rippling throughout your body and you come to the nearest one and are you wanting to take the shove action to shove him prone or do you want to do a grapple check? Mm, I'm gonna... Mm, no, actually, I'll shield bash him. Shield bash? Like, yeah. Okay. Roll the attack. Is that gonna be just... What do I... Am I proficient with shield? <laughs> yeah, you, <you're, laughs> I, I, just, I want you to roll a d20 and add your strength modifier. Okay. That's uh, 19. 19 will do it. So you, you come to this guy and you kind of just boom, floor him with your shield and he falls to the ground prone. Uh, the air kind of knocked out of his lungs. Okay. Anything else? Uh, nope. That's it. Finnegan. I will seize Apatuneti and so I'm going to attack that guy who's been knocked down. Okay. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Roll attack. Uh, 23. Uh, so, quite cool question. So, I have these bear paws. Mm-hmm. He has multi attack. I don't know if you're giving me that at this level, or do I need to wait um, to uh, gain that advantage you, at a higher level? You you don't make a multi attack. You make a two weapon fighting attack. So, you make an attack as an action, and a bonus action, you make a second attack. The second attack um, doesn't count your proficiency bonus, it counts just your either strength or dexterity modifier of the bear. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so first attack, yeah, twenty. The twenty-three hits, and you have um, advantage on it because he is prone. Oh, Hold crit. just in case I can get a twenty. No, I do not. But that's that's fine. Um, okay, I'm just trying to get to the brown bear now. Some of that vague gun. Okay, here we go. Some Fiendiga. Fiendiga. So I'm gonna t- I'm gonna do the uh, the claws attack. Um, so that's a two d six. Not great, not great. Also, uh, 
That's five damage. Gosh dang it. Uh, and then second attack. It is a crit. Is it damage? Oh, okay. Ooh, might as well. We're going to get 220. Okay, and then so that is... Yep, got that. So that's a 1d8 plus... Or no, straight 1d8. Well, you crit, so you roll 2d8. Uh, that's 14. Yeah, so I think, like, together... Not lethal. Uh, the first... The first one... <laughs> He kind of raises his hands to defend himself, and your first claw comes down, kind of smacks his hands away. The second one, you rake him across the chest, and it just kind of cuts him deep, and this splatter of blood comes forward, and this sudden loss of blood causes him to lose consciousness. Uh, And the last thing is the uh, free speech. Uh, Give up now. This is directed at the other two. Make an intimidation check. Yep, not intimidating bully. It's a ten. Yeah, no, that's not going to cut the mustard. They both kind of you, you say give up now, and they kind of just both lower themselves into a fighting stance. Um, it is going to be their turn, um, unless you have something else. No, that's it. Um, uh, yes. So one of them is going to say something under his breath in druidic. Um, I'm going to say that you probably aren't able to perceive that because it's so quiet. Um, but you do recognize it as druidic. And as he says that, this this light comes from him into the, the fallen comrade who <gasps> breathes as the wounds in his chest heal up. Uh, and then it's going to uh, unleash one uh, stone at uh, Peregrine. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That is a 19 to hit. Oh, that just hits. <sighs> Wait, does it hit exactly? Uh, no, I have an 18. Oh, okay. Because we know we do glancing blows if it hits exactly. Nope. There's 11 points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> as, spicy. as this glowing stone flies forth and checks, hitching the chest. And as, as soon as it makes contact with your chest, you, you know, like, this is not a simple stone in a sling. This is something more um and then the third one is going to let's do that so he kind of takes his hands and he pushes them together and he breathes into them and as he does this five foot diameter sphere of flame rises up and it's this ball this this big swirling vortex of flame takes place between him and uh these these lumberjacks that are that are charging this hill and that will bring us right back on up to peregrine okay I know what I want to do. I don't know how much of it I can do at once. Okay. Um, so one guy is down, mm-hmm. but looking healed. One guy yes. just hit me with a sling. And one guy's cast in a ball of fire. The ball, ball of fire has been cast. But oh, yes. it's already cast. Yep. So he just did that. He just did that. Um, I'm going to run up and tackle and attempt to get him into a grapple. Which one? The guy who just cast the fire. You would have to go through the other one to do that. Oh, never mind then. Whoever's the one who just slung me with a rock. You'd have to go over the downed one to do that. Mm. Okay, then I'll just go for the downed one. I mean, it's I'll up to you. I'll get him in a grapple. No, 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 this might help, actually. Uh, I'll get him in a grapple. Okay. Or I will do my best to do so. Yep. So that is... Is that going to be a strength attack? Or it is an, athletic, it's an athletic check. Cool, cool, cool. Which, you have advantage. Um, 24? That'll do it. You rolled okay. an 18. An excellent showing, but not good enough. What, what'd you say? So he, he rolled an 18. An excellent showing, but not good enough. Oh, not quite. Um, this might be a step too far, but since he was already on the ground and I grappled him, any chance I can also pull out the dagger I keep on my belt and hold it up to his throat. Is this, or is that too much? Is this part of an intimidation check? 
Yes, I want to get the other guys to stop by threatening this man's life. You may do so as part of an intimidation check. Very cool. Nineteen. God, that is silly. Um, stop now. One of them seems to hesitate. The other one stares daggers at you. I'll just stare back at him. Pressing this dagger ever closer to this man's throat. Fanny gone. I'm going to Oh my gosh. I'm gonna I'm gonna slap her hand so dagger enters throat. <laughs> Staring at this guy the whole time. <laughs> the dang <danger, laughs> dang man. Um, roll uh, damage, roll. Peregrine, one d four plus strength. Six. The dagger presses firmly into his throat and blood gushes forth. His eyes roll back in his head and all you see is white. You push us to this. And I guess that's my turn. Okay. Uh... (laughs) Remember when Finn was the crowd favorite? And this um, is the moment that changes. So. <laughs> well. Right. Um, the Lumberjacks. They charge forward. Uh, there is a smattering of results. Um, it looks like. God, this is metal as fuck. Uh. Some of them not knowing any better and not being warriors are going to charge up and hack their axes into the man who's already down. <laughs> we did it, boss! <laughs> the guy who I'm holding the dead no, man the other guy. arms! Yeah, that... There's two guys down, right? Nope. No, no, there's there's one guy. Oh, okay. Um... And... The rest are going to come and swing on the secondary uh, man. Hey, Finn, go ahead and drop your three levels of druid and take up three levels of necromancer, please. I'll bring him back. Uh, one of them hits. Yeah, it fits a pretty good slash in this guy's shoulder. Um, the next furthest druid from you that's not hacked to pieces on the ground. Um, and. It's going to be the druid's turn. Uh, they are going... So, the f- first one is going to, um, with this flaming sphere, it's just going to bring it closer towards now this culmination of people. So, three of them are got fucking down. Jesus Christ. Um, as this roaring ball of flame comes across and three of these lumberjacks that were kind of coming down on this guy that was that was on the ground just get blasted by this wall, ball of flame um, and, and kind of fall to the ground trying to put the flames out on themselves. And then uh, the ball is going to continue forward and strike at Peregrine. Mm-hmm. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw. Not my strong saving an eight. Nah, I'm not going to cut the mustard. Why are you putting so much mustard tonight? I don't know why. Uh, six <laughs> points of fire damage. As, and this ball of flame is now just like over top of you. Like it's pushing into your back and burning you. Um, and you can feel the, hot, hot, the heat rising against you and you just smell burning hair and flesh. Um, and then the second one is going to 
take his hand, who just got that cu- that giant gash across the shoulder, the one closest to you guys is going to take his hand and push it into the earth, into the soft earth underneath of you, and he clenches his fist, and these plants begin to s- stretch out of the earth. Um, they begin to entangle you, because he's casting the entangle spell. Um, uh, and I need you both to make strength saving throws. Six. Also a six. Mm. We go down, we go down together. So we're just trapped uh, there, right? Yeah. One of the lumberjacks actually manages to snap the, the plants gathering him, but um, the remaining lumberjack and the two of you um, both have become entangled by these these roots, um, which kind of hold you firmly in place. Um, Do I just have, like, this dead dude in my lap entangled up next to me? You, Yes, exactly correct. Oh. You guys are, like, the plants kind of pull you together, so you're, like, face-to-face with this Oh, Dead man. No. Um, and now you'll understand rail better. That's fine. Oh. You are both restrained, but it is your turn. Um, so on the start of your turn, Peregrine, you can make a strength check. There's a lot of very upsetting things happening to me right now. I will do that, yes. Actually, hang on a second. Um, I... What's the Lord of the Grasping Weeds name? <laughs> <laughs> Steven. Steven. Steven, Eddie! Hey, did you roll with uh, advantage? You have advantage for 10 minutes on strength checks. Yeah, oh, I guess it was saving throw. On, yeah, this is a saving throw. I only have advantage on ethics. Okay. Well, you're so open. Uh, no, a creature restrained by the plants can use its action to make a strength check against the spell save DC, so it is a strength check. It's a strength check, not a saving throw. Correct. Would, would this be athletics? Is it, no, it's a it's a strength check, not a, not a strength ability check. Cool. No, it just says strength athletics and dexterity oh, yeah, no, acrobatics does. checks. Like it's it's just yeah, you're you can still use strength checks. It, it's just giving exactly. you those links. Yeah, those are in parentheses, okay. so it's a please sh- make an you, athletic you check take out with parentheses advantage. like you normally do. I'm sorry, it's a new ability I've never used. No, before. it's fine. Uh, that was worse though. So ten. Ten is not good enough. You try to flex and you try to recoil away from this corpse that is bound to you, but the, the roots just grow tighter around you. It seems the more you struggle, the stronger they are. Finnegan, it is your turn. Uh, I've seen this before, and I look over Oh, I'm sorry, and, and as you end your turn, you end your turn within the range of the Flaming Sphere. Oh, good. You take eight points of fire damage. I am out. Uh, okay, quick, quick, quick question. Mm-hmm. Got a spell that's a main attack. Got a spell that's a bonus. Is that allowed? Or no? Because because uh, it's the specifically bonus action. You, right? you can, can use both. if one of them is a cantrip. Your well, oh. your cantrip has to be your action. Your spell has to be your bonus slot. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, here's this first. Then I'm going to use. Well, the first thing you have to do is make. A strength check because you're restrained. I just want to do the Thunderwave so I don't have to move, right? I don't think restraint stops. Uh, let me check the condition real quick. A strained creature's speed becomes zero. It can't benefit from any bonus to its speed. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage. The creature attack rolls have disadvantage. The creature has disadvantage on the dexterity. Seems like no, you are good. You can do that. All right, cool. Uh, okay, so let me roll. So I guess do that. Let's see. Make a constitution saving throw. Uh, which is, they got to 13. And it, Ray is within, or Peregrine is within range as well, right? It, but it's a, it's a cube where I designate, so it's going to be just setting just however I can on. I think it's, mostly I think in it's, the guy. What, go ahead. Is it not a cube centered on you? I guess it is. It's got to happen. She, what happens, is, so she's down and it does damage. Um, She'll automatically take a death save, a death fail. Okay. <laughs> do you ca- do you cast it? <laughs> Tell my story. Sure. No. Gosh dang it. Okay. I freaking use. 
Healing word. Well, live your truth, bro. <laughs> don't think. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. No, I can't. No, it suits it. I gotta use thunder wave. Okay. Do it. So they're gonna be. To- they're gonna be to thirteen. So, um, well, I guess reduce the effects at least mostly. Ben, the sweetest of boys, is now has done the most damage to his own teammates compared uh, to everyone else. The one that is within range failed. Uh, is that the one who's, who's casted the spell? Who's got the entangle going? He's the one that has entangle going, yes. Alright, he's going to take seven points of damage, and because that's concentration, doesn't that break? The, it, the, it will require him to make concentration saving throw, except for the fact that that is enough damage compounded with the axe to make him go down. The entangle spell dissipates. And he's also pushed ten feet backwards. He is, and I'm also going to say that it, it pushes that uh, sphere of flame ten feet as well. Okay, and then the other guy's going to take half that damage. Show three. He does not fail. He is not within range. Oh, okay, okay. He's fifteen feet away from you, so a ten, a twenty foot cube centered on you would be ten feet. Would be down. like seven and a half feet or whatever. Yeah, ten feet down. Yeah. Um, Ray, you do fail your death save. Mark one mm-hmm. failure. Um, I'll be fine. It is his. It is his turn, uh, and he is going to take that sphere of flame, and he's going to push it towards these two lumberjacks that are encroaching upon him. They gone as these flames come, they, and they kind of they, they, this crash of oh, this sphere of flame falls upon them, and they fall to the ground, and they're trying to pat the flames out, and eventually stop moving. It is your turn, Ray. Please make a death saving throw. It's a four. Motherfucker. That is a secondary failure. Finnegan, it is your turn. Healing word. Reach down. Touch touch her. Uh, That is already rolled six points of heals. It is this man's turn. He is going to bring <laughs> the sphere of flame back up towards you, Finnegan. Make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, five. Seven points of fire damage. As this ball of flame is just roaring right by you and Perrin. Uh, it is going to be back up to Paragon's turn. I'm not feeling so great. There's just one dude, one right. one big bad dude. Mm-hmm. Um, if I stand up, am I still gonna be able to get up to him to attack? You've got thirty feet of movement, right? Yes. Then yes, Do we exactly. Have 15 feet? Yep. Okay, cool. I'm gonna <laughs> crying a little bit. <laughs> get up to my feet. And go at him with my sword. That's a nat one! It's a nat one! I don't hit him! You don't. Ah! I got too many tears in my eyes! Can't see so good. Ten again. Uh, yeah, so I'm. And he's 30 feet? 15 feet. 15 feet. Yeah, I'm going to move up to, to attack him. Bear, Damn. Bear Paul is just out in range. Uh, that first one is going to be a 26 to hit, roll a 19 originally. Uh, and then it's a D8. Five, uh, that's nine plus two for the rage. It's 11 on the first one. Okay. And the second one is, uh, it was a 24 to hit because it was 16 originally. Thank God. It's like five, six, it's eight on that one. Together, they are enough. As you bring these two bear claws up and just you take him across the head and you pull down and you kind of tear his face to shreds and he looks at you. Spits blood in your face. 
and he says the word in druidic traitor and the life leaves him um as he as he dies i just my hands fade from from bear claws to back to my hands and my eyes um fade back to mine and i hold him tightly um as we both fall to the ground, like collapse and I'm sort of silently like weeping uh, and I'll whisper uh, in Druidic sort of a print when things die, uh, especially people, no matter where they're from um, to the earth. The second he goes down, I drop my sword and my shield and I turn on Finn And I just sock him across the face. Yeah, roll damage. Is it, isn't it just four? Oh, you're right. It's one plus strength mod. So Actually, roll, roll the attack. Damage. Roll the attack, Dave. It's a nat 20. <laughs> roll. No. It'll, be, it'll be double damage. Um, so one plus strength mod doubled. That's eight. <laughs> Do I have to keep my rage for a couple more minutes? Because it's my last turn. <laughs> uh, I think you let it go when you said that peaceful prayer to that man. Ah, uh, dude. And then I'm just going to fall to my knees. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end this episode. I just want to say Oof. that as duos go, Oslo and Dumore, A+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all did great over there. <laughs> Nobody died that time. Yeah. Oh gosh, that was upsetting all the way around. I want the record to show that I did not encourage nor suggest the group split the party. You did not. You said nothing about it. Um, everyone who, who keeps saying stuff about ship Finn and Perry, ship Finn and Perry. That's made just I feel it now. Just made this very complicated. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, some of the best love stories start out complicated, guys. <laughs> some of the best love stories start Fist out with, <laughs> with punching <laughs> each other. <laughs> this is the second time I've punched I was about to say, man. you said, yeah. I'm going to punch him. I'm like, That's what? what listen, didn't we learn the line last between time? hate and love is a thin one, guys. <laughs> it's yeah, about the size of like where you could put a knife to a throat and pull. That's, that's <laughs> all. And push oh! one deep into the. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. Oh. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Oof. Mm. Well, that was stressful. Ooh, that was fun. Hey, everyone. Are you guys? We really appreciate you listening to the show. Um, <laughs> the role for humanity charity that we're, we're doing for me, Max Mankind, as always, this this episode is very much the same as our last episode, and that's just Habitat for Humanity. Uh, it is a charity who does a lot of good work for um, people in third world countries, uh, helping build schools and homes and, and give water. And they don't just do it overseas, they do it here too. So when we have uh, natural disasters that affect large areas, even small areas, uh, people are there to make sure that people get, you know, AC in the hot times and that their houses are rebuilt. Um, they just take care of people and do a good job. And so that's where our role is going to. And that role is going to be a. That's a nine. Nine dollars we're going to have tap for, me for humanity. Nice. Woo. Woo. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, Patreon has got a. Uh, wait, Rocky? Hang on, guys. Sorry, my cat's doing something weird. He's like doing her taxes. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta get this That's figured weird. out. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no! It seems a hello. Not you. It looks like the cast of Lost is all here. Ray was a fool and left her mic plugged in, but. It looks as though she was going to do a Patreon. <coughs> a Patreon ad. Oh, well, I think I can do just as Why are you all looking at me like that? Because I wish I was dead. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, well, that Kimchi. would get to serve a uh, Pick a number between one and one hundred. I picked it. What is Do we it? say it? I need Six, to know. It's, it's 69. I knew it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the 69, that's going to be closest to the $50 tier. Would you like to hear about the 
fifty dollar tier. I would like Patreon. to hear that. I would like to hear about the sixty nine dollar tier, please. Me too. Now that I think about it. Dollar tier, you can get a special t shirt, a very special t shirt. <laughs> I, you've made me very uncomfortable with your kimchi's weakness. Sixty-nine. If you if you out kimchi the kimchi, what happens? You become the new kimchi. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I miss you. That's well, I'm I'm so flustered now. I'm just going to wind a lot of stupid these folks seem to really appreciate your patronage and let me tell you nothing is better than patronage oh god Ray can you hear me oh, Ray please come back Ray <laughs> oh, no, back I'm so sorry guys I, uh, he was I've told you about Rocky right he's about um, anyway um I don't know what he told you while you're but... gone Kim she tried to 69 me <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, through the camera. Talking about that. Oof, oof, oof. We're gonna. I'm gonna have some words. Yeah, I'm talking to you. And his, his mouth was bleach. basically a pencil sharpener, so it was very <laughs> alarming for everyone involved. <laughs> I'm gonna have some words. Uh, with him. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, we're much better warlocks than he is, wouldn't you say? Like, it's no competition, right? Just, just the level, the level of returns you get on your patronage from us for us, our patronage, your page. Okay. Everyone's patronage. Everyone's, everyone's patronage. Everyone's a patron. Um, if this show is something you enjoy and you have the means and you want to support us in any way, we have a number of different tiers that uh, give you special bonus, which um, including things like getting a t-shirt, things like putting an NPC in the world, things like getting to play a one-shot with us. So it's really neat. If you want to show your support in that way, we have several different tiers, depending on how much you feel like contributing to kimchi's continued existence as a concept and part of the 50 dollar tier is you get to sit in on the recordings as a special guest not a special guest but you get to the, listen to all this craziness and also you get to see kimchi you get to see kimchi and man is he a sight is he a sight can now, i just like a pencil you're a special or... guest at the 50 dollar tier you're a special guest you're a special guest but you're you don't get to play you're... but you're there you're very special this is what it's like. Star just every time we have a fun moment, she's she's yeah. really sad about it, um, and then we get it, we cut it. It's fine. I'm just a joy killer. I'm sorry. No, you no, can no, hear all of that. You. You're a valuable member of this team. Guess what? During that last fight. <laughs> <laughs> and True. speaking of making things better, let's talk about our Discord real quick, where I'm going to talk about the ch- specific channel Smile Today, where we have a a ton of channels a ton of channels in discord so if you want to talk about something specific you can but if you're just looking for a place to cheer people up uh post stuff that makes you happy like maybe you got a cool sweater today or maybe your dog is doing something cute or maybe you found a really funny D meme that you haven't seen post yet and you gotta share it with some D friends come on over to the discord and pop into smile today and show us your happy things being dogs, children. <laughs> we'll be Being you. dogs, children, memes. Yes. That's all. That's about it. That's really just, that's, that's the main limit. things. <laughs> Those are the main things in Smile Today. Hey, if you've become a patron or in our you are in our Discord, you probably want to support us. I hope. And if you do, you can go to store.awfulstupid.org and you can see our shirts our posters our stickers even sometimes and every purchase you make supports us supports our artists and that's just really cool if you want to do that nice um i would like to remind you all to of course tweet about the show using the hashtag stupid cast if you do i will sing your praises right here on this recording and i will leave you with this question to grow on mm-hmm. if a parsley farmer is sued for malpractice or what have you can they garnish his wages? Oh my god. God damn it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Bye. 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 Bye.